Welcome back. We come back into the PFI Ranch House where the debate continues whether we go with the sauce or the rub. We're going to find out. We've got, we got some expert taste testers to help us out. Mo Bandy, as many of you know, is uh, performing almost every day down at the Starlight Theater, just down the road in Branson, Missouri, and he mm -hmm. smelt the grill all the way down to Branson. Man, when I smell good food, I drop in and help myself. <laughs> I'm so telling you. He followed his nose to PFI. That's down, right. And uh, it, it's going to be worth the drive up here because uh, you've got the sauce, I've got the sauce, and then right. you've got Josh over there who I don't think he's eating very much red meat, but he's going to try it today. <laughs> he's going to try it today. And yeah. uh, this fella here claims he's got me beat on the rub. And all about I tell rub. you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little bit of this off here. Mm. Now this is, you know what? You're not going to see this on a lot of your old, your, your cooking shows on your mm -hmm. major networks where the people on the show actually swap uh, uh, uh. their food. You haven't eaten off that fork yet, have you? No, sir, I haven't. All right. Okay. So I can actually compare here. Mo, you uh, tell me how good that is. Okay, sure will. I think I'll have a little of this uh, jalapeno beer bread. Yeah, that, that does let me, sound let good. Let me cut this here. I've got a question while you're cutting that. Okay. And, and that is, you've eaten all over the United States, all over the world. Where, where's one of your favorite places to eat a T-bone steak? Uh, well, right here. <laughs> Y'all have a little bread, guys. Wait a minute now. You get, that's your... your <laughs> I guess we'll just try a little corner here. You can share, Bo. You can share. Oh, okay. Well, There's a whole loaf on this. <laughs> Pass yeah. the portions there, Josh. Yeah. My favorite steak yeah. is this one right here. Right here? Yeah. The, the next one. The warmest one. That's is right. Your the warmest one. one. This is good stuff here now. <laughs> All right. I like this. Yeah, I guess I got a little bit more bread than you guys. I'm sorry about that. You better... and, and are you going to eat the rest of that steak there? <laughs> I, oh, I yeah, know this you? isn't enough. Justin, yours was pretty good. Mm. It was. Yeah. How's mine? I'll tell you here in just a second. <laughs> and we've also got the pickled. Here, pass that jar over here where people can see what that is, Josh. That is pickled asparagus. That's PFI. Randy Little, who owns PFI, I've uh, I've driven by his place many times, coming over here and, and seen him out there with with the hoe and and uh, a bag mm -hmm. of seeds where he's been yeah. planting that asparagus. And mm -hmm. then he, his wife, John L. She. Uh, she jars them up, you know, yeah. old fashioned way. Yeah, I took that bag of seeds for him there once. Yeah, right. I'm, yeah I'm, when I don't have nothing to do. It's nice. pretty good stuff. If you guys got any left over, I'd appreciate it if you kind of push it down here. I don't think we're going to have any leftovers. I don't believe so. Pretty good stuff. Well, oh, what do we think? You now, we got the. You can't the, spice it up there. Bull snort cowboy cayenne. Are you kidding so, me? Is that what it's really called? That stuff. Cowboy guy. We'll set you free. There. Mm -hmm. Oh, butt burner. Bull snort butt burner. Uh oh. I don't think I'll try that one today. Mm -mm. Well, you can't go wrong. Sauce or rub. You know what we should have done? We should have done both, because I like them. I think it'd be a good combination. What about you, Josh? Thumbs really up. Good. Mouth's full. Really good. Mo's ready for more. Good stuff. PFIWestern.com. Did I just spit off? All over everything. Can I get some more bread, please? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, we're over here in Saddle City with the big dog, Josh, and he is. Uh, the man in charge of saddles over here and he knows everything about them and what I want to know is a little bit more about these Tucker saddles I keep hearing about and how comfortable they are and how popular they are. What makes them so great? We've hit the trail riding boom. Uh, you know Tucker has been renowned for the last 35 years for putting an elevated level of comfort into their saddles. This is a saddle that's built you can ride it six, eight hours and doesn't feel like you've been going all day. Uh, they put a patented gel cush shock absorbing seat in it. Uh, this is the generation two, so it's got a whole new realm of technological features that make it much more comfortable. So for the baby boomers out there who are retiring and uh, going trail riding, this is what they ought to look for. You bet, you bet. And that's where Tucker has really kind of focused their clientele, if you will. Uh, people who 
enjoy trail riding but want that elevated level of comfort. Now it's not just comfortable for the rider, uh, the horse has a lot of comfort features as well. Let's talk about that tree. Yeah, they took their original tree design in the generation two, stripped it down, reinforced it with carbon fiber Kevlar so it reduced a lot of the weight and gave it much more tensile strength. To the bottom of that tree they added a polyform fit bar so the tree actually does adjust to your horse's back some. Then they line the skirts with a gel type material that helps reduce the shock and concussion delivered from the saddle tree to your horse's back. Sounds like they've thought of everything including yeah. a lot of accessories on yeah, the saddle. That's, that's one thing that has really been kind of a Tucker trademark for a lot of years. They always have a lot of rings and saddle strings for you to tie on equipment as you're riding down the trail. You know, I was looking at this saddle, and one of the things that jumps out uh, to me is uh, this isn't your ordinary D-ring uh, rigging. Right, yeah, this is something new for Tucker. They added for the Generation 2. Uh, it's what they call their three-way rigging system. It allows you to rig in the full position, the three-quarter position, or you can split the two rings in, in a V-shape, and that's your seven-eighths position. So it allows you to fit a little broader diversity of horses. So if someone cannot make it here to Saddle City in person, they're in luck because they can go online and find uh, a vast variety and selection of these saddles. You bet. We stock about 500 saddles. They're all online at pfiwestern.com or they can call the 1-800 number on the bottom of the screen. All right. So call, come by, or log on. You Either bet. way, you can find out more information on Tucker Saddles. You never know who's going to stop by PFI's Saddle City. Today we have Robin Gallahan. She's going to talk to us about her yearling program here on Shopping Western Style. Robin, why don't you fill us in a little bit about your program? Well, in the last few years we've really focused in on developing yearling program because we found there was a need within the industry for people to know what to do with their babies from the time they were weaned until the time they went under saddle. So this is a program directed more towards actual horse shows. Right. That plus uh, breeders needed a, a way to market their horses and people needed to know how they moved and what their minds were like. Yeah. And the days of chasing them through the field with a golf cart and a whip are gone. So we understand this is a two-part program that you and your husband have developed. Why don't you fill us in on the two parts of this program? Okay. The first part is called the Yearling Head Start, which is basically um, teaching them about going around on the, the lunge line. They develop their balance and they learn how to move like a pleasure horse without the added weight of a rider. Um, the second part happens later in their yearling year um, and it's started with, uh, it's called Get, get Ready to Ride. Yeah. And um, so they get saddled and they get bitted up and they learn how to handle all of that pressure before a rider gets on. So we've talked about you and your husband traveling around and doing clinics. Do you do clinics at home? Do you have a facility that you train out of? Yes, we do, in Versailles, Kentucky, where we just moved. Okay, why don't you tell me some more about that facility and what you do out of that facility? Well, we train and show, and besides that, one of the main reasons that we moved there was because of the Kentucky Breeders Incentive Fund, um, which really has attracted people from all over the country. Um, basically, what that program is about, um, the state of Kentucky didn't want to lose their thoroughbreds to the surrounding states with great programs, so they made an incentive fund uh, money that will be won by the thoroughbreds, but there are nine other non-racing breeds that get money also. And as an example as to how much money is involved, um, for every quarter horse point earned in 2006, they paid almost $2,800. So that's for any AQHA point that is recognized at an AQHA sanctioned event? Yes. That's $2,800 received? Per point, yes. Wow. But that's only for foals that were uh, sired by a stallion that stands in Kentucky, the mare had to be bred in Kentucky, and then the foal has to be born in Kentucky. Thanks for stopping by, Robin. You can learn more about this program at pfiwestern.com and yearlingheadstart.com.